As you are well aware, information is everywhere. Phones light up, billboards scream advertisements, news outlets push out blurbs and bites, images wink at us, books speak to us, professors teach, preachers preach, and we text and tweet until the world is saturated with information. All of these messages vie for our attention, and so we are constantly confronted by the question, what will I pay attention to now? Of course, the video you are watching is itself information. This instructional video is a delivery device for a series of messages we librarians think are important. And here is the first message. What we are discussing with you for the next couple of minutes is very important for both your academic and spiritual growth as a student and as a lifelong learner. It concerns the ethical use of information, and it will be well worth your time to pay careful attention now. Information ethics is a broad category that contains issues like copyright, information privacy, the fair use of information, and much more. As students, you'll constantly encounter one face of information ethics, plagiarism. Plagiarism is the act of passing off another's work as your own, whether intentionally or unintentionally. The word itself sounds nasty. Its Latin roots refers to a kidnapper, seducer, or plunderer. In this sense, to take another's work without giving full and proper credit and pretend it is your own is like kidnapping. So we imagine the plagiarist must be a rather villainous character with a seedy look and a long mustache. But the reality is that plagiarism is not always intentional. Sometimes it's difficult to detect plagiarism. In fact, that's what makes plagiarism an ethical issue that we struggle with. Ethical issues are created when two ideas that are both perceived as good collide with each other. In fact, perceptions of what is good often depend on culture. For example, in Western culture, originality is considered good and the intellectual property of each individual should be protected. However, many Eastern cultures value shared knowledge and might consider an individual's thoughts and ideas as belonging to the entire community. Because of this, Western notions of plagiarism can be difficult for students from non-Western cultures. But we have found that an accurate understanding of plagiarism is difficult for many students from every background. If you are confused about plagiarism, we encourage you to contact a librarian for help in developing a better understanding about it. Students are expected to uphold the university's policy in regard to plagiarism. Oklahoma Christian's policy on academic honesty can be found in the student handbook and typically at the end of the syllabus for each course. The policy warns against passing off another's work as one's own and describes penalties for plagiarism. In short, don't plagiarize, not least because it undermines the intent of academic exercise and compromises one's character through dishonesty. But the problem is precisely this. Plagiarism is not always intentional. It can be difficult to know how to appropriately use and cite the resources that inform our thinking. So briefly, let's think about a few habits we can develop in relation to information that help keep us from both intentional and unintentional plagiarism. Habits, of course, are those practices that become second nature to us. As we encounter more and more information, it will be helpful to begin now developing habits for thinking about and using information. First of all, invest yourself in the research. The truth is, procrastination and plagiarism are bosom buddies. Rather than waiting until the last minute, train yourself to start your research early and spend time reading the resources for understanding. Second, think, think, think. Critical thinking is a habitual way of engaging the information we encounter. Really try to discern the messages being presented. Allow questioning to drive your thinking. Copy-paste research often reflects shallow interaction with resources and little understanding. Solid research involves wrestling with information. So it's good to develop a habit of critically thinking about the information we encounter. Third, put others' ideas into conversation with your own. This is sometimes called synthesis or paraphrasing, and it's a necessary habit to develop. Often, the way someone else articulates an idea seems perfect, their words are just right, and it couldn't be said any better. This may be true, but research is more than parroting the thoughts of others. Research involves synthesis, bringing together the thoughts of others, putting them into conversation with your own, and drawing new conclusions. And here's a fun fact. 
When you show your own thinking and cite the sources that inform your thinking, you seem a lot sharper and more informed than someone who merely parrots others' words. And more importantly, you demonstrate your own learning. Synthesizing ideas takes practice, but it's a good habit to develop now as you begin your studies. Fourth, ask for help. Sometimes plagiarism occurs unintentionally because of improper citation or an incorrect understanding of what paraphrasing means. Actually, how to paraphrase appropriately is often misunderstood. So if you have questions about plagiarism, how to paraphrase, or how to properly cite your sources, your librarians are here to help. As you are learning more about citation styles like MLA, APA, or Turabian, please feel free to ask a librarian for help and guidance. Make questioning a habit. Habits are important. They can enhance academic and spiritual growth, but they can also undermine growth. So if you're in the habit of copy-paste research, you'll need to quickly break that habit. Remember, Google, Google, XYZ, Control C, Control V is not a magic formula for academic success. There are lots of resources available for learning what plagiarism is and what it looks like. If in doubt, be sure to ask. So be careful to avoid plagiarism and keep in mind that the ethical use of information is an important habit, enriching both your academic and spiritual growth. Wrestling with ethical dilemmas shapes character. Our decisions should lead to growth and habits of the heart are developed over a lifetime of learning. Remember, if you have any questions, be sure to ask a librarian. BEAM librarians and staff are here to help you succeed throughout your studies at Oklahoma Christian University, and we look forward to getting to know you.